Good afternoon and welcome to the Gateway Live Update. Today is Friday. Thank the Lord, it's Friday. March 19th, the second to last day of winter. In fact, tomorrow is only partly a day of winter. It's going to be partly spring. And Sunday is going to be all day spring. And we're going to be celebrating here at Gateway the first Sunday of spring with a special service. We're between books of the Bible. And we're coming into Palm Sunday and Resurrection Easter Sunday. So we're going to have a special service tomorrow, or Sunday, that rather. We invite you to join us as we celebrate the beautiful season of spring. And as I always say, God designed the season around the resurrection because the gospel was prophesied from ages past. So we're blessed to be here. It's a beautiful, cool day here in South Jersey in the high 40s. And we're grateful to God for all of his blessings and what he has done for us. Um, thank you for joining us. We encourage you to stay along. We're in Mark chapter 3 right today. If you want to make your way there on your device or your Bible, Mark chapter 3. As we've been looking through the gospel of Mark the last couple days. And so I'll wait for you to turn there for a second and we'll begin. Don't forget, our if you're on our Facebook page, our weekly email, if you don't get that delivered to your inbox, is there on Facebook. And uh, it's in your inbox if you do get it. If you want to sign up for our emails, just uh, put your a text message here in the comments. And um, we'll do that. We're going to pray at the end of the broadcast. And as we do every day, we encourage you to join us 9 p.m. as we pray again. Wherever we're at, we'll stop what we're doing and we pray with whoever we're with for a couple of minutes about God ending this plague, this coronavirus pandemic. Mark chapter 4 uh, gives us the parable of the sower. It begins and says, and he, Jesus, began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into the boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea and the land. Some people like to comment here and tell you that, oh, it made a natural acoustic, but I believe when Jesus spoke, his voice supernaturally subdued people and reached their ears. He was God on earth. And verse 2, he was teaching them about many things in parables. Parables are stories that are told to teach deeper. They're not what some people will get into that in a minute. But a parable, parable lay two Greek words, to cast alongside of, to give a heavenly meaning to a story that you understand earthly. That's what exactly what a parable is. And it says he was teaching them in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, and this gives us an example of one of the parables. Listen, behold, take heed. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up, and since it had no depth of soil, when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielding no grain. And, we're in verse 8, the other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain growing up, increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, Here you as ears to hear, let him hear. Now again, if you have the ears to hear the voice of Jesus, you'll understand this. He uses this term a lot. He even uses it in the book of Revelation in the seven letters he sent. Each one of them ended, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so here Jesus is saying, if you can understand this, a simple thing that those people, not, not as much uh, our generation, but they, they understood. When you threw seed, you sowed seed, you threw it into the plowed ground. That's what he did. The idea was that crops would grow. That's why he 
told that story. They did this all the time. So they knew it. And I guess even we, if we think and use our minds and imagination, we can understand seeds going on the path on rocky soil, on thorny soil, and in good soil. And so Jesus told them that because it describes what happens when the word, the word of God, goes to a person's ears. Here he, he explains it, so you don't need to explain it. Verse 10, and when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive and they may indeed hear but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven so it says again for us for you and me for those who hear the voice of jesus who are born again who love him we understand we get a deeper meaning so a lot of people think oh i can't understand this too hard no it isn't the holy spirit's in you the holy spirit helps you to understand people who reject it can't understand it that's what he's saying they can't. And he quotes that from Isaiah chapter 6, after Isaiah was called by the Lord in the ministry. The Lord told him what was going to happen. Verse 13, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? And of course, our apostles were a little slow on that. You know that, they were a little slow. But Jesus said, the sower sows the word. The guy who's throwing the seed out, He's sowing the word of God. And these are the ones that fell along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Hasatan, the adversary, Satan, immediately comes and snatches away the word that was sown in them. It happens all the time. The word goes out, somebody hears, and Satan just snatches it right out, doesn't he? He does that all the time. And this isn't just with salvation. This is with when we hear the word all the time. And... Verse 16, these are the ones thrown, sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. How many times have you seen that? Others, verse 18, are ones who are sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Again, we these are natural. We see all these responses to the word, don't we? Especially to salvation. But, verse 20, those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60 fold, and 100 fold. And see, God does this, the powers in the word, and it's if it's good soil, it isn't, oh, well, how come that part? No, it's because are they good soil or not? That's the answer. Are they good soil? And Jesus here continues to tell parables he said in verse 21 to them a lamp bought in is to be put a lamp just like lamp in that culture a lamp was fire a lamp bought in to be put under a basket or under a bed or under a stand question mark for nothing is hidden that is made to be manifest you don't get a lamp now i do have i have it somewhere on my desk i used to and I can't see it right now, but I have an oil lamp. And that's what they would they would light up the room with. And Jesus is saying, you know, the lamp, you don't bring it and put it under a bed or under a basket. You start a fire. It's stupid. You leave it out to have light. That's what he's saying. Because he says, verse 22, for nothing is hidden except to be made manifest or revealed. Nothing or anything in secret except to come into the light. God's going to expose it all. What we think we're hiding, he's going to expose it all. Don't ever forget that. If anyone that's hears to hear, let him hear. And he said...
pay attention to what you hear, for with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who doesn't have, even what he has will be taken away. So again, think about these things, meditate on them. That's what Jesus said. And he said again, and we're in verse 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He doesn't know how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts a sickle to it, because harvest is coming. You plant wheat, he's talking about, and how it grows, and the development of it, and then at the right time it's sickled, it's taken in. Let's do it with our lives. Verse 30 says, And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all other garden plants, and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can nest in its shade. He's talking about Again, that being un unnatural, and I also like to see the you know, consistency and in interpretation. Back in the parable of the sower, he said the birds of the air, the fowls of the air, come and snatch up the seed that falls down on the path, representing the enemy. And I think here is the same thing. He's talking about the church growing, and a lot of people will be in its branches. A lot of people, but not all of them really know the Lord. The birds are there, too. And with many such parables, he spoke a word to them. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them without a parable. But privately, to his own disciples, he explained everything. So he explained everything to the guys that were there, that were hanging with him. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across the other side. Listen carefully to that word. Jesus, who's God, said, let us go to the other side. After leaving the crowd, they took with him. They took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking in the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But Jesus was asleep in the stern, on a cushion. And they woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, it's the master of the earth and sea. It's the Lord God. And Jesus calmed by his words. He said, Shalom, be still, peace be still. And it was done. Amazing. Neat. And on Monday, we're going to pick up in chapter 5, but that's enough for today because we're out of time. And we're going to pray. And again, don't forget don't forget to pray at 9 p.m. tonight as well. Stop whatever you're doing and pray just for a few minutes or however long you want to. But we're going to pray now, and we only have a little bit of time, so let's go. Um, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for being able to gather here. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to heal. We come against this coronavirus, COVID-19. We ask you, Lord, that you would deliver us and help us and bless us. We look to you, Lord, in your hand to heal this world, Lord, and all the problems and all the politics in our country that are so crazy and messed up. Only you can bring revival, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to send forth your spirit to heal and to bring revival that people will come to know you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thanks for joining us. Again, we encourage you to continue to pray. Pray always. Pray without ceasing. And we also encourage you to be here on Sunday, live for our service at Gateway Christian Church, right here in historic Woodbury, New Jersey, 1030 a.m. We'll be here. We have a special surprise guest speaker as well. And you know, when I say spread, it's always somebody good. And I'll be here leading us in the Lord's Supper. 
on our first Sunday in spring, as I said earlier. We're looking forward to it. We invite you to come out. Uh, if you haven't done that already, like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube page. It helps us out. You help us when you do that, and we need your help. So uh, if you can, just get around to that, you know, like them. If you uh, click on the Gateway's website, gatewaychristianchurch.com, you can contact us that way and check out old messages. You're able to give using our giving app. And we just ask you to continue to pray for us as we come out of this thing and we go out better on the other side. And we'll see you on Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. Tomorrow there's the Best of Gateway uh, update, which is posted. It'll be posted at noon. And we'll look forward to seeing you then and for Sunday morning until we greet you next time. May God's richest and blessed be yours.